So in today's video, we're going to talk about the New York City energy analysis. And uh, these are codes that are required to save on energy usage uh, for construction projects uh, where they are required. There are some exceptions to this, which I will discuss later on in this video. So the topics that will be covered will be what are the New York City energy code requirements and where to find these codes. Then it'll we'll discuss when is the New York City energy codes applicable and what are the exceptions. Then we'll talk about where to find the templates for the energy analysis and how to determine which ones to use. Then we'll discuss some of the New York City energy code requirements in some more detail. Then we'll be modifying the energy analysis table based on a job example that will be used. So the New York City Energy Conservation Code are the codes required and it's abbreviated NYCECC. And this is public information that can be found on the New York City DOB website. The link is here. And when you click the link, here is the New York City Conservation Code. And there's different years. Uh, some previous years are listed here. The most current one is the 2020 New York City version up here. So uh, once you click this, it'll take you to the Conservation Code where it's split up into two sections here. So everything can be found here. So, so the residential and commercial sections are available and the correct one needs to be applied based on the job uh, conditions. The commercial section can be applied if not considered a residential building. And a residential building is defined here. Uh, I took a snapshot of the actual code section, but if you wanted to check the definition in the code, it can all be found here under uh, definitions here. Okay, you could just click this. Definitions here. You could do a control F, type in residential. And you can see uh, what is a residential building. And also, this section here is what was shown here on the PowerPoint presentation. And the definition here is what I pasted over here so it can be easily found. So, just going through this, detached one family dwellings having not more than three stories above grade plane. Also, a detached two-family dwelling not having more than three stories above grade plane. So you have one and two families detached uh, are considered residential buildings. And uh, there's more here where it consists of three or more attached townhouse units and have not more than three stories above grade plane. A townhouse is considered a townhouse is defined here where it says a townhouse unit means a single family dwelling not single family dwelling unit constructed in a group of three or more attached units in which each unit extends from the foundation to roof has open space on at least two sides meaning usually it's the front and back and has a separate means of, of egress um, here at number four buildings that are classified as group R2, 3, and 4 and have not more than three stories above grade plane. And R2 is defined here. Uh, it's more than two dwelling units. R3 is not more than two dwelling units. And R4 is more than five persons but not more than 16 persons who reside on a 24-hour basis in a supervised environment such as for assisted living and alcohol and drug centers. These are some examples. Most of the work that we do will fall under R2 or R3. So it's either going to be a two-family unit, one or two family, or more than uh, two family dwelling units. So three units or more. So now we're going to go over when the New York City Energy Code is required and some of the exceptions to it. So it's applied to any job that is in the five boroughs of New York City where it is required. 
uh, which include the Bronx, Brooklyn, Manhattan, Queens, and Staten Island. Uh, New York State projects, so if it falls outside of the five boroughs of New York City and it's in New York State, then you need to follow the, the New York State uh, Code, which is the Energy Conservation Construction Code of New York State. So you have to be careful as to when to apply the New York City ones and when to apply the New York State Code. Now, if the project is in New Jersey, which we sometimes get once in a while, uh, they follow the International Energy Conservation Code, abbreviated IECC. So here, the five rows, uh, if you just look at this map, just generally show you the area. And here are the five rows in New York City, Staten Island, Brooklyn, Queens, Bronx, and Manhattan. If you fall under Nassau and Suffolk County, uh, this is... Uh, the code that you would apply would be the New York State code. And sometimes the, the towns in Long Island may have their own requirements. Now we're going to talk about the exceptions to the New York City Energy Code. So these are the ones that are listed as exceptions. Uh, if the building is listed on the National Register of Historic Places or on the State Register of Historic Places, Determined by the Commission of Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation to be eligible for listing on the State Register of Historic Places to be a contributing building to an historic district that is listed or eligible for listing on the State or National Registers of Historic Places or otherwise defined as an historic building in regulations adopted by the State Fire Prevention and Building Code Council. So this is the website right here. So you can just type in any address here and it will take you there. And the color coding represents a uh, different thing. So if you click this, it'll give you the legend and the pink represents individual landmark uh, buildings. And the yellow represents historic districts here. So any building within a historic district you will be able to apply the energy exemption to. So some other exceptions are based on work types that do not affect energy use. Temporary structures as described in section 28-111. So some of the work types that would get the exemption are fire alarm, fire suppression in a range hood, meaning for kitchen hoods, stamp pipe systems, sprinkler systems, fuel storage, construction equipment, curb cut, builder's pavement plan, and fire protection plan. The ones that our company works on would fall under A through D. Sometimes E, but not so often. All right, so we're going to go through one example. And the example is going to be for a residential building with three units. The total number of floors is basically three plus a cellar and basement. And Seller's common area. The basement at first will be the first tenant, and the second floor will be another tenant, and the third floor will have another tenant. So these are the three tenants uh, in this uh, three family unit. You know, first question is which code do we use? Is it the residential or the commercial? Now, if we go back to the definitions, uh, a residential building will be uh, one of these cases, right? So we have a three-family unit, so it's going to be this R2. Okay, it's more than two-family units. And for the R2, it cannot have more than three stories above grade plane. So, so in this case, uh, what is a basement? Uh, in the energy code, the basement is defined as a story that is not a story above grade plane. So it doesn't apply to this count here. So in our case, we have a cellar basement. The basement doesn't count as a story above grade plane. And we have floors one, two, and three. So we have not more than three stories above grade plane. So in our case, we need to apply the New York City Energy Code for residential buildings rather than the Commercial Energy Code, 
requirements. So that means we have to pick this section here, residential provisions. And the bulk of the requirements is under residential energy efficiency, R4. Here is going to list all the code requirements for the residential building. And we need to pick the ones that are applicable for the specific job. So, you know, for every job, you have to read the entire section and apply all the ones that are part of the work scope. They're going to talk about uh, building thermal envelope. And this section gives you all the insulation values, the minimum R values that are required for the building. This section we don't really need to concern over since this is more of what the architect would provide because it's, it deals with the structure of the building. So the only thing we need to concern ourselves over is the U values and the R values in the load calculations that we perform. We don't actually have to provide the energy analysis requirements for any of the insulation values for the building components. So we're going to skip all of this section here dealing with the insulation values uh, for the building component. Now there are sections on rooms containing fuel burning appliances. If we don't have any, uh, we can skip this section. Uh, in our example, we don't have any, so we're going to skip this. Recessed lighting, it, it deals more with the electrical plants, so we can skip this. Now, this section deals more with the mechanical system. So, programmable thermostat. This is something that will be applicable to our example, since we're installing HVAC units. So, we're going to have to add this.